Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Saped in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Saped opens with, opens with C4. Um, let's play let's play E5 this time. We'll play the King's English. Knight C Knight C3 is played. Um, I'll put Knight C6. I used to play a system involving uh, G6, Bishop G7, D6, and F5. So I may opt for that this time around. Um, what you typically want to do though is play F5 right away. So I'll play that. I've had a couple nice wins, but I haven't played this line for a very long time. Um, let's play. Hmm. Yeah, I'll play D6 first before going for the Fianchetto. And I hope the game proceeds in a way that will allow me to explain some of the ideas in this system. Place E3. Hmm. Okay, we'll put the knight on F6 now. Very strange the way white's arranging their pieces, because almost always white wants to Fianchetto the bishop on the king side. So let's play G6 as planned. No castle, I'll play bishop G7. Hmm. No, he goes rook B1. So trying to arrange B4. Now you can either <clears throat> let B4 happen, or you can play A5 to try to stop it. Oftentimes it doesn't matter too much, because if A5, he'll play A3 and renew the threat of B4 anyways. So I think I'm, a, I'm just going to develop and let him play B4 if he wants, and thereby gain space. Yeah, now let's castle. But I, what I will be looking to do is uh, expand on the king side. So play like H6 and G5 coming up, assuming his king actually goes over here. Let's check my opponent's stats real quick. So he has a peak 15 minute rating of 2134, over a thousand games played. He does castle. So I can play bishop e6 to complete my development, but he'll play knight g5 and hit my bishop. So that's why h6 is usually played to preface the bishop e6 move. Moreover, h6 is useful because it prepares g5. So we'll play that. In a way, this system is similar to like a king's Indian in that um, white will be pressing on the queen side, whereas black will be looking for king side play in the form of this pawn storm. So now I could play g5 right away or I could just play bishop e6. I'm kind of leaning towards bishop e6. Just wondering if bishop e6 and he breaks in the center with d4, like how that will affect things. And whether I want to play g5 first as a result. Maybe I want to play g5 first because I don't see like a huge upside to playing bishop e6 straight off the bat. Yeah, let's go do this move. He plays bishop a3. It might make sense for me to play b6 in order to slow him down so he can't play c5. Otherwise, with the bishop on a3, it supports the c5 pawn advance. The only thing about b6 is it weakens the c6 square, but I don't think that's relevant because it's hard for him to get a knight in there. It takes several moves. Yeah, so let's do b6. Hmm. And he's breaking in the center. All right. So after that move, we kind of have to play e4. I wonder if this is playing into his hands, though, because then after e4, knight d2, like he can look to play um, c5 later. But that does give away the d5 square. So maybe it's not too bad. It'd be nice to be able to have the option of knight to g6, but he, he takes and then I'm pinned. So my rook on f8 would be attacked after I took back. So I have to make a decision with this pawn, either push or take on d4. And considering that take on d4 seems to run into um, knight takes d4, and maybe bishop f3 to come, hitting the rook on a8, I think I like pushing. Could play g4 too. g4, take e5, I take f3, takes f6. Mm. Could also play g4, take on e5, take on f3, and just bishop takes f3. That way he's hitting the rook on a8 as well. Hmm. So if e4 knight here, knight to d2, let's say I play knight g6, and then he goes f3, I can play rook e8 then. Okay, let's play this move. I think it's almost forced, so I'm going to have to play it. Hmm. Let's go knight, e, knight g6. This seems to be the correct way to proceed. 
I'm a little bit worried about a couple things. One, the possibility of C5, like he can do that soon. And the other was, yeah, like F3 if he wants to undermine our center and kingside structure. Not sure about this move right now, though. It might have been better to proceed with the queenside plan first. We'll see. So here I have a lot of options. There's pawn tension created. And in addition to just taking or leaving the pawn there, I could also consider uh, pushing f4. So like threatening their pawn. So if f4, he takes e3. He could take on g5, though. Doesn't look too hot. Hmm. Maybe I have to take it. Might have to give in and capture. If bishop b7 trying to defend e4, he can just play d5 and lock my bishop out. So if I take, he takes with the bishop, let's say rook b8. Now that position might be reasonable for me. Yeah, let's take. Hmm. So again, c6 is weak, but he can't use it right now. He has a backward e3 pawn, so I might try to play rook e8 and pressure it. He could play e4 to try to offload the pawn, trade it, but I don't have to take. I could push past, like, f4. Maybe I can play g4. It's a little hard to get a grip on this position because it's it's unlike what I'm used to in this line, especially with him putting the bishop on e2. Overall, I think I'll have good play, though. Hmm, he actually does play e4. So that gets rid of the backward pawn, but maybe allows my pieces to come into play a little bit. Okay, what about knight g4 now? That would be an interesting way to not only threaten knight e3, but also threaten bishop takes d4 check. How does he deal with that? So if knight g4, if he takes it, bishop takes d4 check, king moves, take on g4, looks like we've won a, a key pawn in the center. Um, if knight g4 and he plays... Yeah, a knight move, like knight b3 to defend d4, then we're getting into e3 winning the exchange. Maybe he blundered knight g4. If I take on e4 trying to do the same thing, like open up the bishop, he gets to take with this knight is the problem, and then his queen defends the pawn on d4. If knight g4, e takes f5, Bishop takes d4, check, king h1, knight e3. Yeah, we ought to be winning material there. His rook's hanging, his knight will be under attack. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's go ahead and do it. I don't see a downside to this move. And there's nowhere his queen can go that will simultaneously defend both the e3 and the d4 points. We still have a pretty healthy rating. Um, yesterday I ran into a player that I'm like 95% certain was cheating, which was kind of unfortunate, but we only lost two rating points because of that game. He was provisional. Um, knight b3 is played, so knight e3. This is just allowed. I guess white's just going to try for compensation. In the form of their minor piece play. He maybe played a bit too quickly. Ooh, here I can actually take on c4 if I want to. But then he has queen a2. I could take a3. Hmm. Okay, knight takes c4, queen a2, knight takes a3. There's discoveries with this knight, but I don't think it's too dangerous. Maybe you can go knight a5 check and then try to bring the knight into c6. It's a bit murky. Probably banking the exchange is safer albeit not as glamorous. Ooh, knight takes c4 is very tempting, though. I, I just like the look of that move. 
Knight takes c4, queen a2. I could even play king h8 if I wanted right there. But let's say knight takes a3, queen b3 check. Uh, let's say king h8, knight c6. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it going down that road. Okay, let's just bank the exchange. He'll take with a rook. Now we can take on e4, he has to take with the knight if he wants to avoid further trades. I could uh, I could go um, f takes g4, knight takes g4, g4 if I want to continue trading. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know if I'll play g4, but I might just play like bishop f5 after he captures. Wow, he takes with the bishop. It's surprising. This allows the rooks to come off the board, and then my queen can hit f6 with tempo, check on his king. Not sure I like that idea for him. Hmm. Check. Alright, let's trade. Yeah, let's give a check here. Check. And then maybe this bishop can come to e6 to guard the d5 square, so knight d5 isn't a problem. Knight e7 is also a good move. I think either one is decent. Knight f4 could be played as well. Knight f4 is probably the most aggressive move. Then if knight f4 or g3, I have knight h3 check. If bishop f5, there's knight d5 hitting my queen. And then like queen f7, maybe they can take and then take the pawn on c7. That's why I'm kind of like looking more so at this move. That attacks c4 as well. It's probably just a good move. Yeah, let's do that. Might have to part with our light square bishop, but I think it's okay. The weakness of d4 and also the fact that we're up in exchange like more than makes up for that. Let's say knight d5, bishop takes. Uh, bishop takes, king h8. Check. I can prepare knight e7. I'm playing king h8 instead of king h7 because I want to stay off a light square. If I go king h7, I'll be walking into a pin. He's playing really quick chess. Okay, now I can play rook e8 if I want and deny his bishop the use of the e4 square. He might be playing bishop b2 to like free up his knight from the defense of d4. Knight f4 also looks really good here. Knight f4 hitting the bishop. Let's say knight f4, bishop e4, rook e8. Just bringing pieces into, into the game with tempo. Let's do that. Hmm. I guess he could go knight here, bishop c6. Because the only thing, like if I start with rook e8, I'm just kind of worried about him playing g3. Not worried, but I'd like to rule out that move. Nah, but then, hmm. Let's just do this. I think if bishop c6, rook f8, I'm going to have plenty of play down the f file. I'm actually threatening knight h3 check. Uh, G takes h3, and then queen f1 mate at that point. So we'll keep the play simple. Yeah, bishop c6, rook f8. Threatening this check. And how can he defend against that? He might want to move his queen in order to defend f1, like queen e1, but that allows knight d3. So maybe queen d1. But that allows knight h3 check, pawn takes, queen f2, and then I can go win this loose bishop on b2. Looks like he didn't see the threat, because now I can take, he takes with a pawn, queen f1 check, king h2, rook f2 check, um, winning his queen. Just checking to see if there's a smoother way to do that, but that's, that's pretty much decisive. Yeah, let's play it this way. Check. He'll probably move his king, like king h2, rather than submit to that variation. But either way, we're happy. If king h2, I could play queen f4 and trade queens right away if I want. I could also maybe think about ways to play for an attack further. Um, like just knight f4, for instance. Queen f4 would be the clinical way to do this. Yeah, he doesn't really have much effort. Ooh, actually, okay, so queen f4, 
I should look if he can take on h3. He can't because they're queen h4 mate, but <laughs> it would be um, irresponsible not to look at that. Check. Yeah, let's just do this the, the surgical way. Trade the queens and win with our extra exchange plus pawn. Because as I mentioned many times, like when you're in a winning position, you want to um, reduce the imbalances in the position, cut down on your opponent's chances to attack you. Without the queens, I mean, he has no chance of ever mating me. So we're just trying to minimize uh, the variance in this position. Knight c1, okay. It's probably a good move, actually. I don't know, though. I can go knight e6, attack the pawn, and then my rook is ready to invade. Hmm. I think I'll play h5, actually. Hoping for g3, knight e6, so that knight e2, I can play rook f2 with tempo. Yeah, let's do that. We have 350, so we're, we're going to have to play a little faster. But like now, if he wants to get rid of my knight, he's got to play this g3 move, and that just walks right into knight e6 with tempo on the pawn. Because if I had played that on the previous move, like knight e6, knight e2, rook f2, he did have bishop f3, I saw. Defending the knight. But if I can get him to play g3 like he just did, and now here knight e2 is also good, but I think this is also just winning. But now the second rank is open and knight e2, rook f2 check wins a piece. He played this game very quickly. Um, I think around the time that he played f3, like way back on move 15 or so, um, that's when things started to go south for him. This is kind of a clever defense. So if bishop takes b2, take on d6, if I just take his knight, he has e7, and he's going to win my rook back. Actually, I didn't see that defense at all. I don't think it really is going to help him much, but it is clever. Um, I mean, I could take and drop the bishop back to f6, but I don't think there's any reason whatsoever to give him a passed pawn. So let's just play it like this. I guess I'm not winning a piece, but <laughs> whatever. If I had played rook f2 check, he could go king g1. And same thing, like if I take the bishop, he'll take on e6. Let's pre-move this capture. So now again, knight e2 cannot be played. He'll probably play a move like king g2. I can pick up this a pawn if I want. Mm, I can also bring my king up, king f6 to e5. That's kind of tempting. Then his knight might get dominated. His bishop is actually like kind of just a spectator in this position. It's on c6. It has nowhere to go. So I'm playing knight e2 so that after king e5, he can't activate this knight. He can't even get into the d4 square. Maybe I'll bring my king all the way up to e3. Never know. Okay. So he's trying to get out through f3. I mean, g4 makes sense to deal with that. If knight back to e2, I think knight to d3 is pretty crushing. Threatening rook f2. We don't really need this pawn on a4. If we go take it, it doesn't really even help, at least in the short term. But creating a threat like rook f2 is pretty massive. Let's just infiltrate with our king. We have rook f2 whenever we want it. Hmm. He's really going passive. I could just take on c4, but he'll go knight e3. Um, knight e1 check I can throw in. Let's do that. Check. Hmm. Knight f3 check. King g2. I think I'm just going to go here with my knight. And bring it to e3. Because there will be attacking his knight and also threatening, like, maybe rook f1. This c4 pawn hangs whenever I want. He does have bishop d7 now, but it's not really much of an improvement, is it? Let's offer a trade. He'll play knight f2. There's not anything else he can do. 
After knight f2, I can play rook f3. Yeah, and he's losing the g3 pawn. Knight still has nowhere to go. He's trying to attack h5. Check. King h2, we have rook g2. Um, let's go right back here. Up, oh, lots and lots of material. <laughs> Always nice. Okay, now if the knight moves, rook f1 is checkmate. Okay, and he resigns. So we went up to 23.55 after that game. Let's go back and have a look. So this used to be one of my main weapons against the English way back in the day. Um, you can play this like f5 system in two ways. You can play f5 right away, right on move three, or you can play g6 right now, fianchetto the bishop, and then play f5. But you play f5 in conjunction with the fianchetto bishop. So... Um, d4 is possible here, trying to strike in the center. I would have played e4 against that. And then after knight g5, the play takes on a, a pretty unusual character. Bishop b4 is possible here, pinning the knight, Nimzo Indian style. But um, he played d3. I just went d6. Yeah, and this was an unusual treatment. So the times that I've faced this from the black side, usually white ops for set up like this. And then rook b1. The plan he did in the game, it's except with a kingside fianchetto, which I think is better because his bishop will be aiming towards the, the queen side, and it can assist in a pawn storm from a distance. Um, I had a game against Justin Sarkar from, I think, Foxwoods 2003. That was a nice illustration of like the queen side versus king side action, and I, I won a nice game there. Um, it actually made it into new in chess, which was really cool at the time for me. Um, but he played e3, which is definitely unusual. Put the bishop on e2. It just strikes me as a little bit passive. Here I could play a5, but you know, usually the effect of playing a5 and then a3, white's still gonna get b4 in, but there's this open a file. So it might be better like to refrain from playing a5 because you don't really want to open lines on the side of the board where your opponent is pressing. So by not playing a5 and thereby letting him play b4, um, I'm recognizing that he's going to play b4 eventually. I just don't want to gift him the open A file, which is ironic because if I had done this, let's say the game had gone like this, you might be thinking like, well, why is that a big deal? Like right now black has the file, which is true, but I don't have anything I can do with the file. I can't even bring my rook in anywhere. Um, and he can take it back. Like later on after he castles and plays B5, he'll probably play like Bishop B2 and Rook A1 and maybe even use the A file to uh, infiltrate down. So Bishop G7, uh, B4, castle, b5. His knight on c3 is undefended, so you always want to look at like e4 tactical ideas, but with my with my knight blocking my bishop, that's not going to work. So here I played h6. The purpose of that again was to rule out knight g5 so I can safely put my bishop on e6, also to prepare g5. So uh, h6, he played a4. Now went g5. Let's start the engine right about here. Just kind of curious if I played this properly. Hmm. Go figure, the engine says a6, like try to open the file. <laughs> but um, yeah, I played g5 instead. Maybe d4 is a good reaction coming up soon. What if I just play bishop e6 and he goes d4? Similar type of play? Could be. g5, f3. Yeah, I like g5 because I feel like, you know, it's it's a move I want to play eventually to um, allow the knight to come to g6 and also initiate my pawn storm. So he went bishop a3, I played b6. That was just to stop c5, like make sure he can't play that move. d4, and I played e4, knight d2, knight g6. And he's playing very quickly. I mean, he's played 14 moves in about a minute here. And I think that might be a little too fast, just because even if the position is familiar to him, um, I doubt he's played it with the bishop on e2 very often. Could be wrong about that. But hey, he has a, a plus 1.13 advantage according to the computer after 14 moves, and he's only used a minute to get there, so maybe I shouldn't be criticizing. 
But f3, I took on f3, takes the bishop hitting my rook. And now e4, yeah, that move was a mistake. Okay, so for sure this one, um, he did think a while before playing that move, but could have used even more reflection. He just left his d-pawn undefended. The computer prefers queen b3, connecting the rooks together, also threatening c5 with check. So after king h8, bishop b2, reposition the bishop. Wonder what white's plan would be from here. Maybe a knight a2 to b4 idea, trying to get into c6. Maybe e4 under more optimal circumstances. I don't know, remains to be seen. I think it is better for white because black's kingside attack is probably not going to amount in a mate. Um, I mean, one benefit of not having a pawn on g3 is that it's harder for me to make contact with his kingside pawns. Whereas with the pawn on g3, like often you can play f4 and like break up those pawns. So I don't think this position is like terrible for black, but I, I do see why the engine like prefers white. It usually likes white in this opening with the space advantage that they have on the queen side. Just like a, a king's Indian, like if you ever analyze a mainline classical king's Indian, the engine just goes crazy for white's position. It just loves that uh, space and the queen side push. It doesn't really think too highly of black's chances on the other wing. But yeah, e4 was a clear mistake and we picked up on it with knight g4. Good way to take advantage with the dual threats. So, hard to say what his best bet is here. I mean, he opted to just give up the exchange rather than the d-pawn, but the computer thinks that this is the better way of thinking about it, trying to play this position, and then knight d5. This knight is annoying. I'd probably just play to get rid of it here and take, but um, this might be better than giving up the exchange, yeah. Even though black's minus 0.88. The fact that I'm not, like, minus 1 or greater means white does have some compensation, according to the computer, though. So knight b3, uh, knight e3, queen d2. Thought briefly about this move, but I think that like unnecessarily complicates things. I just wasn't sure about check. check, followed by like, oh, did I think? Maybe I hallucinated here. What in the world was I thinking? Oh, knight a5, that's what I thought. <laughs> check. I was like, I know the knight was coming to c6 somehow, but I forgot how. So let's say king h7, knight c6. Oh, knight takes b1, and I can just go for, like, lots of material. If he takes my queen, I take here. And I have this coming, if necessary. That's a cool line. Queen c4, f takes e4. And material count, I'm up four points of material. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure I, I like this line, even though it's, <laughs> according to the engine, minus five. It just looks very messy. It was a mildly enticing decision, though, like whether to take on f1 or take c4. I think I made the right call, though. Take off one. Rook takes, take on e4. I was surprised. Is there something wrong with knight takes e4? Because that's a move I would have played. It just seems like he should do this to make it harder for me to exchange. Knight h4 is good, going after the, the bishop. I might also think about g4 to make the bishop move and then trade. But he took care of business for us with bishop takes, Check. and then we trade. And now I just have to get coordinated. Just get my bishop out, get my rook into the action via the e or f file. Check. Knight chose to do it this way, and then bishop e6, I think it's fine. Knight d5, and take the pesky knight. Check. Now we got to watch ourselves on the light squares a little bit. I was explaining the difference between king h8 and king h7. King h7 would walk into this diagonal, so we don't want to do that when his bishop can go to e4. Yeah, and he it's too far-fetched for him to whip anything up on the light squares. Meanwhile, we have very active pieces. I get this rook f8 move in, and I was threatening knight h3, g takes h3, and queen f1. It looks like he doesn't have a good way to deal with that. Because like I was saying, like a move like queen here would allow knight d3, forking the queen and bishop. And even a move like queen d1, um, I could play knight d3, threatening to come in. Um, yeah, this just looks bad. I think I was also... Yeah, I was looking at knight Check. h3 in the game, which is also probably good, but same idea. Check. Like infiltrating and going and taking that dark square bishop. So, he played h3... Actually, he might not have even blundered h3. It might have just been like he didn't see any other way to deal with the knight check threat. Check. But we take here, and same thing if he takes this way, check. this line I gave where we check. pick up the queen and win the game. So he did this, and check. I think queen f4 is fine. I mean, the engine might might say that the, like, some other better move, but um, you know, you want to you want to make it simple when you're this far ahead. Minimize the chance that your opponent can come back. Check. Kill any potential counterplay before it becomes an issue. And we're just up in exchange plus pawn. 
yeah, we got him to play g3, and then a rook is potentially coming down Check. to f2. e6 was a, uh, rather, d5 was a clever defense, but it didn't really matter. I just wanted to avoid the scenario like this, where he gets his pawn to e7, and he's going to be queening. We have to give back our rook soon. This might be a draw, just due to the opposite color bishops. Even that might be winning, actually, but I'm not sure. Check. Best to avoid it. My king infiltration might be extravagant, but um, I really like king activity in the end game, <laughs> and there's Check. no downside to doing this whatsoever. And there's many ways to win. I just chose one that seemed natural Check. to me. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Um, I'll link to that uh, Sarkar game I mentioned. I think in that Sarkar game, I actually played an a a6 move at one point, and the a file did become open. So my little discussion of whether or not to do that. Um, I have like violated that principle before, but I kind of think like it's probably in best, Black's best interest to keep the queen side uh, as closed as possible for as long as possible. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.